Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you how to install a remote starter on a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. This is the 5.9 liter uh, V8 and it's the extended cab, or quad cab as Dodge calls it. So anyways, um, before you get started on it, um, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to print off and buy. Um, so. I'm just going to be installing the CompuStar, it's the, I guess it's the CS800S model, uh, I believe, so you can see the unit is a CM800, I believe the S just means that uh, the clickers have the lock and unlock buttons on them uh, for the doors. And so, uh, since I don't have a factory installed, or I don't believe I have a factory installed, uh, automatic door lock and unlock. Um, but I do have it, I mean, it's wired for it, and they work, I just don't have the clicker. So, I'm going to be wiring that as well today. Um, so I just got this off Amazon, I think it was only like $45, totally worth it, um, for me. So, before you get started though, um, you're going to want, these are, uh, they're, sometimes they're called a tap splice, or, um, I think they're, they're basically like a T-splice or something like that. Essentially what you're doing is it's allowing you to connect in one wire onto a, like a wire that's already running. So I'll show you what uh, what I'm talking about later. Um, so these make it super useful and easy. Um, I would absolutely recommend getting these. It's going to make your job probably about half an hour faster. Um, you're also going to need zip ties to kind of wire zip tie all the wires up so they're not hanging down. Uh, down at the pedals here <clears throat> and you're also going to I printed this off of Bulldog security systems online you just go and, and find the model and the vehicle that uh, that matches the vehicle that you're installing uh, your remote starter on um, mine said that this should be the exact same procedure for years 1998 through 2001 I assume for other years it's going to be very similar, but uh, the wiring uh, colors may be slightly different. So, um, once you have all the supplies that you're going to need, uh, go ahead and I'm going to disconnect the, uh, the battery. Um, but, at some point you may need to reconnect it so that you can test wires to make sure that you're uh, on the right wire. So I failed to mention previously, there's a couple of more things you're going to want uh, before you start this project, otherwise you're going to be stopped halfway through. Um, so you're going to need two of these relays. Um, it wasn't very clear online anywhere that I searched about this, but you're going to need two of these unless you already have um, an aftermarket system put in because somebody else would have used these. Um, so you need two of them, and their numbers are from, you're going to see later on what they are, but uh, there's two 87s. Sorry, let me get this right side up. Two 87s, you can see there, a 30, an 85, and then an 86. So um, if you're ordering it online, they are much cheaper. That's kind of what they're going to look like. Uh, you can just put in those numbers and relay, and you'll be able to find a site that has these. But you're going to need two of them. Uh, you're also going to need another line. Um, here, you're going to be adding a 30 amp uh, fuse here, and so you need a 30 amp fuse holder to hold it, because you're going to wire that in. You're going to need a bunch of extra wire, um, and then you're going to need these caps, because the easiest way to do this are these caps are going to go on here, and then you're going to use this extra wire here uh, to wire it all, and I'll, I'll show that later on what I'm talking about. So, But be sure that you get all this before you start the project. So, with the battery disconnected, the next thing you need to do um, is you have this bezel around your uh, your uh, gauges and your steering column that needs to come off. Uh, just be careful, as you can see mine's cracked a little. Uh, you can use a screwdriver or some other flat edge. Uh, you might want to use something that's plastic because a screwdriver can scratch this. So go ahead, you just uh, pop it in between here and pop it out and the whole plastic will come off. I forgot to mention, uh, to get the bezel off, you see it just pops out. Um, it's actually easiest if you have your shifter, if you have an automatic shifter, uh, put it down into one there, um, and then the, the bezel will come right off. 
And then next you have this plastic under here and uh, that's underneath the steering column. So to get it off, you have three screws, one here, I already took them off, they're Phillips. One right here, here, and then here. Okay, so now let's walk through all of the different wires that you're gonna need. Um, so you're gonna need the eight pin connection here. These are the big thick ones. These are basically um, the constant power to your system along with um, these are the the wires that the system is going to use to crank the car over for the remote start. So you're going to use all of these. Um, you should also have a 12 wire one. Um, this is going to be used for the lock and unlock on the door. Uh, we may not be using all 12 of these. They may not be connected. So kind of depends from vehicle to vehicle. Um, this one you are going to use, and this one's pretty annoying, because this is going to go under the hood so that anytime that the hood is open, um, the remote start won't work. So it won't accidentally go off if it's in your, in your pants and you accidentally press it while you're working on the car. The car won't start on you. Um, so when the hood's down, this is depressed, and then when the hood's up, it springs back up and makes that connection so it won't remote start. Um, you'll also have another set of wires. This is just for the antenna, um, so we'll deal with that later. Um, and then usually you're going to have an extra set of wires like this. I don't believe we'll be using this set. I think it's, uh, it's a set of six. Actually, it's only four wires in here. Uh, we probably won't be using this, but if we do, I'll let you know. Um, so the next thing you're going to need to do, as you can see here, these are the majority of the wires that you're going to be uh, tapping into. You can see it's all connected in this plastic thing here. It just pops right off if you just basically slide it up and then pop it off. Um, next, you need to get the bottom piece, bottom uh, plastic here off. Um, and so to start, you have this uh, star screw here. I believe it's a, a T20 is what fits on my end. Um, and then I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let you know if we have to take these two out as well. We probably do. So you do need to take these two screws out here. They're actually, again, the T20, the star. Um, hopefully you have one long enough because if you have a setup like mine, uh, right here it's too fat to get through here. And so it's too, it's too short. So I ended up having to jury rig use an Allen wrench that fit in there and uh, this one barely even fit. So. It's, that screw is about that deep in there. So, for both of them. So, you need to take those off next. So, the next thing you need to do is you have the second plastic piece here that you need to get off. So there's another star here, right there. It's the T20 again. And then, yet again, there's another one that's super deep um, right here uh, that's a T20 as well. So that comes off. And with that off, you have full access to all of the wires that you're going to need to uh, to basically hack into for the remote start. Um, so what you may want to do now is you can take a knife or rather some wire cutters and uh, let's see, and basically this electrical tape here, you can cut that because you're going to need access to a lot of the wires that are in this bundle right here. So before you start connecting them, I'm at the end here, um, kind of jumping forward a little bit, but I need to explain this now. Um, as you're connecting them, make sure that you're connecting them either on, you, probably on the back here, so that everything can connect back here. So you can see I made a mistake here, and I'm gonna have to fix it, is I have all these wired into the ignition here, and these are all the main from the eight pin, and then I have that headlights one wired on the other side here. So you can see they, they go on both sides of this metal bar here. So unfortunately what I'm gonna have to do is cut this green one and then uh, strip it on both sides and then connect it back on this side here behind the green, or behind the support bar. Um, and then I'll have to tie them together and I might actually solder them and then cap them. Um, so as you're doing that, as you're connecting all these, make sure that you're connecting all of them on the back, back here, because that piece of plastic it's going to have to sit flush 
against here, and so you can't really have wires on this side here. So you have to make sure that they're all going to fit behind here, and they're not going to, like I did, have them on both sides here. So make sure as you do that uh, that they're all back here. Otherwise, you're going to have to fix it like I'm going to have to. So we're going to start by connecting the 8-pin wiring harness. Um, so I'm going to start with just the red here. Um, so according to this diagram, there's a 12-volt constant. There's two, a pink and pink with a black stripe through it, and a red. And those are your 12-volt uh, constants. And so on the wiring harness, these are your two 12-volt constants, just your plain red and your red with a white strip. Um, now I'm going to connect the plain red to the pink with the black strip through it. Um, and as we get further along and I end up testing it, I may have to reverse these two and put the solid red on just the solid red that comes out of the uh, steering column. Um, or, yeah, the ignition switch. Um, so, if you look, you follow from the ignition switch up here. You follow it down. Um, you can see the pink with the black. I don't want to wire up here though. Um, I mean you can, but you you have to put all this plastic back on here. And so that can really get in the way. And so um, I'm going to wire it down here because this is where the plastic ends here. And then I'm going to start wiring here because you're going to kind of create a bulk here of the extra wires. And so that way it's kind of out of the way of the plastic. Alright, so the next one is a bit of a tricky one. We're going to be doing the green slash white one. Uh, off of the 8 pin. Um, so according to this, that's the parking lights, the positive parking lights, which is the black or yellow, black slash yellow, or the brown slash yellow, um, found at the headlight switch. So this one's a real pain in the neck. You have to take the three screws off, right here, and then there's two at the bottom as well that need to come off. Uh, they're just Phillips. Um, and so you can see there's your, your black and yellow one right there at the top. Uh, very easy to get to once you pull this out. But the problem is you have to feed that wire down through here. Um, so what I did was you can trace it. So I started here. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well. I don't know if you're seeing it. Like, so I just kind of fed it up through there. Um, and then as soon as I saw it come through, see, there's just a tiny little spot there for it to fit. So I didn't have the cap on it yet at that point. I just put the cap on so it won't slide back through. But connect in the green with the white stripe to the black with the yellow stripe there. Or if you have a brown with a yellow stripe, uh, connect it into that. So next we're going to connect the white wire. Uh, which is the accessory 12 volt positive wire. Um, so if you look on here for accessory slash heater blower one is black slash orange. And make sure it comes from the ignition switch harness. So as you see here, don't get tricked. Right here there's actually a black and orange, but that isn't from the ignition switch. So if you follow the ignition switch here, there's the black and orange, but there's also one coming from here which is the turn signal. Um, so make sure that you're not mixing those up. Make sure that you're following these ones. And it'll be this one here. But as you can see, there's a second one there. Make sure that you get the correct one. So next up, going down the list, you have blue. Um, but if you look at it, it's actually for the second starter or second accessory, which the Ram 1500, at least for this year, doesn't. So starter two, not available. Accessory slash heater blower two not available. So it's kind of a trick one. The blue won't be connected to anything But you have the yellow and that's actually your starter So your starter one is yellow and that comes from the ignition harness So it's this yellow one here off of the ignition side. Go ahead and follow it down um, It comes out right about there. So go ahead and connect the yellow wire from your 8 pin into the yellow wire on your ignition harness. So next up is the green wire um, and basically this is your ignition wire. Um, so there's only one green wire for uh, the 8 pin harness so I'm going to go ahead and connect it to ignition 1 
Um, because that's positive and this needs to be a positive as well, even though ignition two is positive, but we're going to start with just ignition one and see if we can get it to work. Um, so that's going to come from the ignition switch harness, which is right here. Uh, you can see that blue, so just go ahead, follow it down, and it's just going to be just going to be down here. So uh, make sure that you're not mixing it with that light blue, um, because that's not the one that you're connecting into. You're connecting into that dark blue one right there, the one right here that I'm holding. So go ahead and connect the plain green one from your ignition harness into uh, this blue one right here. So the very last one um, is the black on the 8-pin, which is the ground. Um, so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to test. I believe this bar here will work um, for ground, but uh, to do that, um, first you need to reconnect your battery so all the lights are on. Um, and I have one of these that has the light in the center to tell you when it's getting power. So I'm just going to clamp this on here. And um, the red, is it the red or the red? The red, white. So the red with the white um, should have constant power. So then I'll just touch it on the pin in here and this should light up. So um, for the ground, you can connect in anywhere that's metal here. Uh, if you want, you can undo this bolt um, and wrap the ground under here. If you want anywhere on here because this is all connected in over here um, so anywhere on here I mean if you want to drill a little hole and uh, put a screw through and wrap the uh, the ground on there um, so it was actually a good thing that I checked this now because I found out that these clips are not not very good um, they were not cutting through the rubber uh, to make a connection so I'm going to have to go back through on all those that I connected, and I just checked it. And uh, if you do use these, what you can do is you can take a box cutter um, and basically strip away the wire a little bit so you're exposing uh, the metal. Um, and then you can go in and reconnect this on. Uh, so be sure to expose the metal on both the wires you're connecting in and these. Um, Another way that you could do it that is much better, but um, you need to make sure that you're connecting onto the correct wires, is you can take a knife or a box cutter, strip away, you know, about half inch of the, um, of the rubber coating here, and then take the wire and you split it so that it has a hole in it, and then you'll take your new wire that you're wiring in, you'll strip it, put it through here, twist it all around so that it's all connected properly. Um, that's something I may just end up doing that instead um, because of how much hassle I have to go through. I'm not sure yet. Um, but, and then you can either solder it, solder the wires together, um, which you gotta make, like I said, be sure that you're connecting the correct wires, or uh, you can just tape it with uh, some electrical tape like this to uh, cover all of the wiring. So those are a couple options on it, um, but at this point it would be a really good idea to go through. Um, this is a really nice tool to check that and make sure that all of your wires are properly connected and that it's at least getting power. So the majority of these are getting fixed, um, but I'm having one that just would not stick. It's the main power, uh, the red with the white stripe. Um, so this is actually where this little tool comes in handy. So you can see I stripped it away about half an inch to an inch. Um, and again, make sure that uh, your battery is disconnected at this point. What you're going to do is you're going to stab through this wire here and create a hole. So you can see I kind of split the wires there. Now you're going to take this wire and you're going to put it through the hole that you've created. And basically you're going to... It's hard to do with one hand, but you're going to wrap it around the wire here and then you'll just take some electrical tape and you'll just tape over it all so that all of the wire is not exposed anymore. And if you want, uh, you can solder it. Uh, that's the best practice, obviously, um, but I don't want to do that at this point at least until I know for sure that I have everything wired correctly. 
So uh, when you're done taping it, it'll look like this. And so you just make sure that all of the exposed wire is covered with tape uh, so that it doesn't short anywhere else. You can see I connected the ground right there. I just stripped it off and pulled that screw back a little. It's just a little Phillips head and uh, screwed it back on underneath. Um, so on to the 12 pin connector. Um, let's see here. So the first couple we're not gonna be doing um, because we have the parking light for the negative output. Um, and as you can see there, there isn't one. Uh, the second starter, which there isn't one, as you can see. Um, you have your second accessory, or for us, it's the accessory slash heater blower, but there isn't one. Um, so, this one you can, it's uh, just another ground, so you can go ahead and connect that one into that first ground from the 8-pin connector. So you're gonna go ahead and skip a couple until you get down to the white wire. Uh, this is optional if you want, but it's for the horn. Um, so the horn is the black and red wire that comes off of the steering column harness. Um, so you can go ahead and connect it in. If you follow it, actually you're following it from uh, in here. It's uh, that one right there, black and red. Um, follow it down comes down over here. Uh, it's a teeny tiny wire, but so is the white one. Um, so you may want to just, you can either cut it and strip it and then cap both ends and the white, or you can just strip back the rubber, kind of like we did uh, for that other red one, um, and then feed the white wire through and then twist it around and tape it off. It's kind of your choice on what you want to do there. So the next wire you're going to be connecting is the gray slash black one that's the hood pin one um, and so you're gonna connect that under the hood so that you can't accidentally remote start your vehicle while you're working on it if the hood is open um, and so um, there's quite a trick to it I'll show you what I did um, it's kind of annoying because you have to cut one spot so under the hood here um, back in here you see that orange um, so what I did, that's actually a zip tie. So what I did was, and I don't know if there's a better way to do this, I tried to work it under uh, the sleeve there, but I just couldn't get it, so uh, it's just a hard angle. So I just took a knife, poked a hole through the rubber there, and uh, see, I zip tied it on and tied a knot in the gray slash black line there. Um, so. Now, from inside, you can hopefully, you should be able to see it. Um, there it is. So right there is the orange zip tie that I poked through. So I'll just reach up and I'll be able to pull the line through. And then I can connect it onto my 12 pin here. Just find the gray black wire right here and uh, connect the two. Uh, probably end up using a cap for that. All right, so to wire this piece in, uh, it takes a little bit of work, but you have to disconnect the wire from here. Uh, you might need a, a knife or a screwdriver to pry it off. Um, so you disconnect it. Uh, what I did was I zip tied it on here. Uh, there's some good holes both here or here, depending upon what you want to use, um, that this will mount on to real nice. So just go ahead and mount it on like this. Um, and then screw it in from the bottom and then reconnect this. Um, and then you may have to adjust the height uh, once you have everything reconnected um, and you're trying to start it. If it won't automatically start, I would suggest um, coming and checking this um, and making sure that it's depressed like that uh, before it'll remote start. And you might have to adjust the height on it either up or down um, so that it'll remote start for you. All right, so the next thing you're gonna connect is the light blue slash white uh, line. And so um, what that is, is it's for the brake pedal. So when you get in the car or the truck, when you step on the brake pedal, it turns off the remote start. So if you don't have the key in and to the on position, it'll cut it. So it's 
usually the only way to turn off the the car or the truck um, once you've remote started it. So um, that is going to connect to the brake wire, which is a white slash tan one, and it's above the brake pedal. Um, so you just follow the brake pedal up to this box here, and you can see the white and tan one right there. Uh, you might need to uh, cut some of this electrical tape back uh, just so that you have more room to splice into that uh, that white line with a tan stripe down it. So next we're going to be doing the uh, lock and unlock, which it's the six pin connector, um, but it actually only has four wires on it. Um, this took me quite a while to figure out, so this may get choppy as I kind of run through everything. Uh, because I may have to go back and, and fix some stuff. So, um, we're going to start with the, um, let's see, we're going to try and do the lock first. So, the lock on here is the blue slash black wire on here, and we're going to try to connect that to the, there we go, the lock on here, which is the orange slash violet. So, um, if you download that PDF here, uh, this is what it looks like. It takes a lot of work and is extremely frustrating, of course. I had to tear a lot apart uh, to finally figure this out. Um, so it comes from the door harness, uh, which cuts through here. Um, so right here, there's normally a piece of plastic uh, that's just kind of blocking everything in to get that out. It's hooked under here, so you need to loosen at least these two bolts. You might need to loosen further back. Uh, they're just Phillips. So when you loosen those up, you're able to pull it up a little and you can uh, pop this side plastic piece out. Um, next, there is basically some insulation right here. It kind of looks questionable, like you're hiding uh, some type of illegal drugs in your car. Um, but it's just insulation in a bag. So uh, that pops right out and behind it you'll finally see the wires. And so what what I had to do, um, you can kind of see them there and I could see the pink and violet one there which I knew uh, was one of the ones we need to get to so I just followed it down here. Uh, this was all taped up so I needed to take um, take a box cutter and cut off the tape and then peel it back and so I'll be connecting in um, my black and blue wire to that orange one there um, so go ahead and do that next okay so now for the really confusing part where you're gonna wire all of this together um, so there's a couple ways you can go about it um, by the way that's the part number if you're looking online except it only pulls up really expensive ones um, so just search, you know, 87, 87, 85, 86, 30 uh, relay, and you'll be able to find it. Or that in the front picture should look something like that. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some electrical tape, and I'm going to tape these two together. Um, for me, I'm going to tape them back to back, so you just got to make sure like that so that those are are together. Um, you just gotta make sure that when you do that, um, it's gonna change their orientation so you're just wiring them together correctly. So I actually taped them together this way. Um, when I was putting these two back to back, these two bottom connectors here, both 87, uh, were way too close to one another. So um, my numbers are upside down, but what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm wiring together, I cut four similar pieces, um, so go ahead and do that, and then uh, you need to strip both ends like this, and I'll show you how to connect it into, into these uh, female uh, disconnects real quick. So with one end stripped like that, uh, you're going to take your connector, and you're just going to feed it in until it feeds through like that, um, and then you're going to take some clamps, and you're just going to clamp down on it here to crush the metal and you gotta you gotta press pretty hard otherwise it might slip out so go ahead and do that um, you're going to do that for at least four of these connectors like that
So with those all connected, you'll just wrap them together like this. And from this point, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, for me, what you're, the next thing, well actually what you're gonna wanna do is connect to that 30 amp resistor that you got. Um, and you need to connect it onto those four, um, those, sorry about that, uh, those four that you already have connected. So you can either just wrap them together, you can cap them, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder them on. I realized after I set this all up that I probably shouldn't be doing this on a table inside. Um, this should probably be done outside, but uh, I'm comfortable with soldering. So anyways, go ahead and connect those, either solder them or um, or cap it together. And if you do solder it, then take some electrical tape and wrap it around around it to uh, cover all of the exposed wiring. So I kind of wanted to explain uh, how to wire up these relays because it gets really confusing. Um, and so essentially what's going on is all most, well, almost all universal uh, remote lock and unlock systems, what they do is they send a negative pulse to the lock and unlock system and that will activate the actuator. Um, but for the Dodge uh, Ram 1500, it actually needs a positive pulse. And so that's where these fuses are necessary because they actually convert that negative pulse from the, the aftermarket system into a positive pulse onto the wires uh, for your lock and unlock system. So um, what I do, or what I'm showing here is... Um, the relay and how it needs to be wired to convert that negative trigger into a positive 12 volt output. And so as you can see here, uh, and you're gonna wire it exactly the same for both the lock and unlock, is um, both the 86 and the 30 on the relay are gonna go to that 12 volt with the fuse. Um, and that's kind of where those four wires come from. So on both fuses, the 86 and the 30 are going to all get wired together into those four wires and go into the 12 volt fuse. Um, the 87, the top one, is your 12 volt output. So that's what it's being converted into. And that's going to go to both your lock and unlock wires in that side kick panel. And then the 85 is the negative trigger from the, um, from the aftermarket system. Uh, so whether that's going to be your lock or unlock, in this case it's the blue, or the blue with the black stripe. Now, on that schematic that I printed off from Bulldog Security Systems, um, it shows, I believe, pink and violet for the lock, and orange and violet for the unlock. Uh, but in that kick panel, I actually ended up using pink with the black stripe on it for the lock, so that's what that 12 volt output is going to connect from the 87 on the relay, that top 87. Um, and then for the unlock, orange and black, uh, which is, again, that 87 from the 12 volt output is going to go to that. Um, and I'll kind of show that in just a sec. And what I ended up doing, you really don't have a lot of room in that kick panel for those wires to wire stuff in. So I know it looks really messed up in the next little clip, um, but I, what I did was I wired in some extra wire, so I cut both the pink and black and the orange and black, and then I capped on some extra wire to lengthen it uh, so that I had more room to work. And then from that, I was able to connect in the 12 volt output from that relay. So hopefully that all makes sense. So it took a lot of work and a lot of trial and error, but I finally figured out how to wire up the uh, lock and unlock for this system. So, um, this may get a bit confusing because I already did it all, but um, I just want to explain it all so that you can know how to do it. And literally have spent probably four to six hours trying a bunch of different combinations and trying to figure this out. So that's why I do these videos so that uh, you don't have to spend that time and so I can show you how to do it. So I guess I should first explain that my truck has and came with the automatic locks, but it didn't come with with the keyless entry like this. You know, it had the lock so that you can, you know, lock and unlock it, but it didn't have the keyless entry. So that's super important to know as you're trying to figure this out because it may be different for you if you have the keyless entry. So here's what I ended up doing. So I had to go to the kick panel and see I did a bunch of different wires there. 
But the ones that you are going to end up using is there is a, let's see, it's going to be pink. I'm sorry, let me find it better. So it's going to be pink and black. Um, you can kind of see it. I'm sorry. It's really hard to get a good angle on all this. This is, again, why it took so long. So pink and black. It's pink there. It has a black stripe on it. You can't see it from this angle. As well as orange and black. Um, see, that's orange and violet. I ended up not using that one. That one's just capped back onto itself. Um, but you can see it. There you go. The orange and black there. So you're going to go ahead and use those. Um, so for the, let's see. We'll, we'll start on the, um, on the lock side. So you're going to need these two relays here. Sorry if this is just kind of all over the place. I just want to explain this all to you. Um, so you're going to start with the two relays. Uh, really doesn't matter which one you use. Um, so you're going to have all of those positives go into, I ended up, you should have a 30, a 30 fuse here. I have 25 because I tried all these different options and uh, I ended up blowing out the 30 and I didn't have a, well I blew it out twice. So I only had a 25 left, but I'll end up replacing that with a 30. So uh, let's start with that. So you have your, your four positives that are connect, connecting in here. They're connecting onto, um, if I can get it to focus, I'm sorry, onto the 30 on both sides. 30, and then it's also connecting to the two inner 85 and 86. So 86 there, and then 85 on the left there. Um, so uh, those are the ones that are connected. So your two 30s here, actually, I'm sorry, it's going to be that both 80, 86. So 86 here and 86 here. So those are the four. These one here, here, and then here, and here. Those are all connected into your positive, and you need to wire that into a constant positive. I just wired it into my constant positive off of my starter ignition stuff, because that goes into a constant positive that comes off of the steering column. So start with those four. Uh, next, <coughs> we were going to do the lock side. So um, according to mine... See, and this is where it gets all confusing. So your blue and your black is actually a negative output from the system. But for it to work on this truck, you need to convert it into a positive output. And that's what these relays are for. So that black and blue wire is going to go on to the center one here. Um, and that's the 85. So that needs to connect on there. And then... The very last one that connects on is this back 87 right here that I'm, I'm touching uh, with my index finger. Um, that back 87, that one is going to connect in to your orange and black wire up here from the driver's side kick panel. So that is how you wire in the lock. And then for the unlock... It's the same situation where it gives a negative output there for the the pure blue wire here. So it's a very similar situation. You already have your positives wired in, um, and then you're going to wire in that uh, negative output from your system. You're going to wire that in to the 85 on your second relay, and then your 87 back here is going to wire up into here, into the pink and black wire there. I know it just is pink here, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a black strip on it. Um, so go ahead and wire all that in. And when you do that, it'll finally work for you. It's kind of a weak, it's pretty weak lock and unlock, but uh, you can see it. Kind of weak, but it works, and it'll work from a distance as well. So that's how you wire it. Um, you're essentially just converting that negative output from uh, your starter and keyless entry system. You're converting it into a positive output from these relays. So that's how you 
um, wire in the lock and unlock on your system. So one of the last things that you need to connect in is uh, your antenna. And so I already connected it in to the box here. Um, but a really nice placement for it would be up here. Um, it does have stickies if you want to stick it on your windshield. I just leave it on the dash, leave the stickies off. Um, so what I plan to do is, I probably shouldn't, but I have this space here. It looks like a piece of my plastic has fallen out. So if it's fallen out, that means that you can pull it out if you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and feed my wire down through here, and then I'm going to follow that same path down through that green one that I followed um, for the parking lights. So go ahead and feed your wire down through there uh, so that you can connect it into your box. So one of the last things you're going to do as you finish up is you're going to need to zip tie all the wires up. Um, so you already had this main one coming through. Um, for the steering column and so it'd be good to zip tie onto that it's a good anchor point or anywhere on here um, you just got to get it out of the way so that your feet are never going to catch on it so you can zip tie that up most boxes are as you can see uh, see it has a uh, little spot there for a zip tie on both sides um, so it's real easy to zip tie it up so just go ahead and zip tie it up um, one of the things that I kind of did this on accident but I'm really glad I did is uh, try and get these fuses in an easily accessible place. Not on this exact system, but on another remote start system that I installed, um, one of the fuses blew once. So it's good to have these in an easy to access place. So as you're finishing up, make sure that you zip tie all, all of them together. I mean, they, they came kind of all folded up anyways, all the wires, so it's really nice to just kind of keep them in that folded and zip tie them. Um, and then you can kind of position them where you want and then zip tie them in place. So hopefully at the end, uh, once you get everything connected in, you'll plug it in. Um, I'm just testing everything out right now. Um, so you plug it all in, you're gonna have to put it all back together. Um, so for this one, everyone, it might be a little different to program it, but for this one, um, for the CompuStar, the CS800S. Um, basically, you just put the key in, turn it forward like that five times in a row within a 10 second period, and then you'll press the lock button on here, and that'll program it to it. It's automatically set to the first setting. Um, so hopefully, once you're all done, it all actually works correctly. So let's see it start up. And there we go, off of the remote start. It's pretty awesome. So hopefully go through and check everything. Um, make sure that when you press the brake pedal, kills the engine like that, that's important. Um, I thought it wasn't working for a sec, I just realized I have to press the brake pedal all the way to the floor for it to, uh, to kick off the engine if the key isn't in there. So anyways, that is how you install a remote starter for a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. Uh, they're all going to be pretty similar depending from engine size. It should be fairly similar wiring setup. So anyways, hopefully this was helpful and uh, thanks for watching.